What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today I'm going to show you something really quick that I wanted to show you in one of my previous videos related to Flycam and that is pausing the environment around you. And there are a bunch of different ways to do this and values you might have to look for but commonly it is a boolean value. You know like is the game world paused or pause the game world, right? Um, so since I kind of have no idea where to start with, there are a bunch of different things that you can do. Like if you hit escape in the game here, all right, that froze everything. So we could try to find our way to like, you know, maybe we hook the, the function that gets the key and watch for the escape key press and we see where that came from and trace it where it goes and try to find something in there that actually pauses the game world and then we could toggle that ourselves. Um, another way is to um, try to find things in the world that stop and go and then you backtrace from there and see if you can find your way into a bigger sort of pause function if you will. Uh, another thing that you could do is use Ultimap in Cheat Engine, and it's basically a function call filter. So, you know, once we hit escape here, we can see which function was called. And then when we hit escape again, or click no here, we could see which function was called and try to find whatever function pauses the world, starts the world, or here it's the same function, but it's having a different value passed through to it to pause and unpause. That's another option. There's a bunch of options. <clears throat> what we're going to do is scan and then backtrace. Okay. So in this case, um, typically what I like to do is something that I identify as moving, I like to make it not move. And then usually that will be like a one, you know, like, is this thing paused? Yes. Right, so that's where you would look for a boolean of a one. So this guy I'm standing in front of right now normally moves, all right? So I'm just gonna start with a new scan for one here. I'm gonna toggle these. Uh, we could look for byte, but I'm just gonna keep it four bytes because usually a four byte allocation is what's used for these values. And this will help us weed out a lot of uh, other unnecessary results. So I'm going to do a first scan here. We're going to get a bunch. All right. Now I am going to move so that he can move. And now I'm going to scan for zero. Okay. And now I'm going to, I've got hotkey set. I'm going to do unchanged. I'm just going to hold that. Now I'm going to stand in front of him again. All right. And I'm going to search for an exact value of one. And then I'm going to do a bunch of unchanged scans. Let those values whittle down. All right, now I'm going to move and then let them stop again. And I'm going to do unchanged. All right, now I'm going to let them move. I'm going to hit changed. Unchanged. I'm going to hold unchanged. All right, now I'm going to do changed and unchanged. And you want to get this down to like as few results as you can. All right, so changed, unchanged, unchanged. And I'm going to stop them. Changed. Okay, changed. All right, so we've got it down to about those. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, all right, it looked like these toggled first. I'm going to toggle these and see what happens when I move. Okay, nothing. So I'm going to get rid of these. Oops. Wow, I screwed that one up. <laughs> All right, let me scan this down again, and I'll be right back. All right, got those results back. Um, so watch them closely over here, right? And as I move, you see there are three that kind of change first. And it's this one and those two that I had just tried. So I'm going to toggle this one now and see what happens. 
Alright, he's still moving, so that's not it. So we're going to nix that value. All right. And we're going to get rid of... It looked like there was one more there. We'll remove that address. We know it's not these two. Remove selected addresses. Okay, I want to add these to the address list. Now I'm going to toggle these while they're one and see what happens. So I'm looking for some kind of jittery behavior as if it's trying to stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. All right, so those aren't it. Uh, let's see, remove selected addresses. All right, let's bring the rest of these down and try these. All right, so he's still moving. See a little bit of a conflict there with the numbers, but he doesn't look jittery. So let's try this last one here. All right, of course it was the last one. <laughs> uh, that happens way too often. Anyway, okay, so bam, we found this pause function, or value rather. Uh, this is used to represent this character pausing, okay? So now what we can do is find what accesses this address. All right, and we have this one compare. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Bring this here, bring this back up here. Okay, so we have this one compare that's happening. All right, I'm going to untoggle that and move back over to them. Okay, and we have these two things happen. Now I move away, it resumes, but look, this compare is constantly checking against a value of zero. So I bet this is a shared instruction with a lot of different things. So let's find what addresses this instruction access. It's got a lot of things here. Okay, so if we stop. All right, I had a little snafu there, so I'm back. Uh, and so we're back with these instructions here. We've got this compare. We're going to show disassembler. Um, let's try to change this to a 1 and see what happens if we compare against a 1. Okay, I can't move anywhere. So that's not it. Uh, we could play around within the subroutine and find that this isn't the thing that will actually like pause the world, so to speak. So what we can do is right click here and go to um, break and trace instructions. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll save stack snapshots and step over, say okay. All right, that's over here. Drag it over, all right. Okay, so I'm going to expand all. All right, and now what I actually wanna do is just start looking up the chain of execution. So if I double click here and then in the memory viewer, all right, this call, what happens if we replace with code that does nothing? All right, I've got me not being able to move, so let's restore that. Okay, let's go farther up the chain here and see what happens. All right, with this call right here, this looks like a virtual call, so we might see a crash. Let's go replace with code that does nothing. All right, same thing. Restore with original code. Okay, we're gonna come back up here. Basically, we're just trying to get rid of calls that all the way up the chain, and hopefully one of these will be like the master caller of pausing. So we could replace with code that does nothing here and see what happens. All right, look at that. I can't move. The balloons are moving, so there's some other pause functionality I've got to find. The clouds are moving, but the characters are all frozen. So now what I can do is, you know, I can't move, but I can still orbit the camera around the player. So let's enable our camera struct. Let's go decouple camera, fly cam, and let's see what happens here. All right, there we go. So we're moving the camera around while mostly everything in the game world is frozen. So there you go. That's just a quick, 
quick video showing you a way that you can find some pause functionality. Uh, you can just play around throughout the subroutines you find yourself in. Um, try getting rid of different calls and see what happens. Maybe your game crashes. If it does, keep moving up the chain of execution and trying stuff there. Once you find yourself to a place like where I'm at, I might end up digging around a little more throughout this particular function I'm in. So you can right click wherever you're at and go select current function and see the extent of the function you're in and try to read your way through the assembly and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, now that we've got that, uh, just restore and then we could just do tools, auto assemble, uh, template AOB injection so that we get our code snippet. I'm going to copy that. Say OK here. OK there. Get rid of this. Oops. And go assert paste. Get rid of this. And all of that. Alright, so we get rid of this call, get rid of this stuff, we keep our snippet here, alright, and then we go File, Assign to Current Cheat Table, and we call this Pause Game World, or something like that. Close that, close this, okay. I've moved my character away, but now I'm going to go, boom, pause. Alright, so, there we go. Game world is paused, script works, and good to go. So I'll have this script up uh, on my GitHub. I'll have a link below where you can uh, download this and all the stuff that I have in the script. And you can start futzing around with things yourself. If you have this game, it's a really fun and great game to play around in, so highly recommended. Uh, but anyway... Um, I have a Patreon if you've enjoyed my content so far, if I've helped you at all, and you feel like you maybe want to help out a little bit monetarily, I would greatly appreciate it. You don't have to at all. No worries either way. i um, going to have some stuff there for members only, whether it's um, like custom tutorials, custom scripts, uh, some early video releases, things of that nature. I'll be getting that rolling very soon. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll talk to you all in the next video. Take care.